Hello, everyone, and welcome to another North Node conversation. It is my pleasure to be joined by Jasmine, another Aries North Node. We will get to hear a little snippet of her personal experience with her unique North Node. So we'll pepper in some context as we go about the rest of her chart as far as how that Aries North Node is working in context with the rest of her energy. But without further ado, Jasmine, welcome to the show, if we can call it that. And let's start by how is this Aries North Node transit finding you so far? Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I'm a fan of the show and of the channel. So thank thank you. you. Thank you. Um, The North Node in Aries is finding me um, in my power, shifting into my power. Um, It is activating my authority of myself, I will say. Um, Having a South Node in Libra um, and just with my childhood experiences, life experiences, Um, I've been very much a person like a go with the flow, keep the peace, peacemaker, harmony (laughs) type person, um, which comes at a cost uh, on an individual level of like what's true for you, um, what feels fair to you. Um, There's a lot of sacrifices that come with that. Um, And so I feel like the Aries North Node is like heating things up for me around like (laughs) having those courageous conversations and um, you know, being willing to follow my impulses and to cut off things that are not actually in alignment with what I choose or what I'm choosing to create for myself at this point. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've been welcoming it. I was a little bit nervous about how it was going to, you know, come out and it's come out swinging. I will say that, but, um, (laughs) it's been good. It's been good. It's been freeing a lot. It's been freeing you a lot. Yeah, it's been freeing me from a lot of things. Mm, yeah. What degree is your Aries North Node at? My Aries North Node is at 14 degrees. Okay, so we're not even, well, not I'm we're great. sitting at like 25 degrees at the time we're recording. So there's there's another chunk to go before we get to your exact nodal return. And it came out swinging. Yes. Whoa. Yes. yes. Yes, when it you, could be because I have Mars and Aries too. So it's like, yay, like my time to shine. <laughs> like, right. my chart, but, tell, yeah. tell us a little bit more about what does that mean when you say um, like you're, I, I forget your exact word, but like taking authority over yourself. Like mm-hmm. maybe you even said you practice that. Yeah, yeah. So taking authority over myself, I feel like, um, and maybe this shows up because of other placements. And so I could share that too. Um, so I'm a Gemini rising, an Aquarius sun, and a Scorpio moon. Um, so interesting combo there. We can talk about that. But um, I, um, going back to like childhood, I had a very dominant, like my mom is actually an Aries, a very dominant Aries energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like I view Aries as an authority in my life, like as a Libra South node. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like for me, like authority was always outside of myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like with this transit, I am beginning to integrate like that piece back into myself, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like bringing the authority inside. Bringing, yeah. Inside versus external. Mm-hmm. It's not up to somebody else to Correct. be the decision maker. Yes. Um, and what's that like? Like, what are the, what are the. <laughs> the pushes and the pulls, like what are the, the outside things that are kind of pushing you into that? And what are the inside things that are pulling you into that? Like the realizations of what these outside things, like, why does this keep happening? Like, why do I have the same experience over and over again? That's something I feel like no matter what your North and South node is, you find the thread, you find a theme of like, this person is doing the same thing this person did. And they did the same thing that person did. And like, wait, am I the common denominator? What's going on here? (laughs) Like, how does, how does, how does one get catalyzed into taking authority over themselves? Yeah. Um, I feel like it all, it generally comes, at least for me, it comes with like reaching your breaking point, um, within situations with folks. Um, and so, 
I have a tendency to um, do the right thing, like be the bigger person, be the like compassionate, like all of those like loving, harmonious qualities that Venus brings to Libra, um, especially in relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, So I have a natural like um, instinct to like, it, it's not, I don't even think about it. It's like, I hear things and I just do that, you know, like I'm just that person. Um, and so I feel like having that, um, and then being in relationship to other people. Um, and then at some point you recognize that like, okay, that's not being reciprocated. And so like Aries kind of raises up a little bit there. Um, and at that point, I feel like I'm able to kind of, I will start to like, try to advocate for myself. Um, but it's still with this, like this person is like on a pedestal or has more power than me. Um, cause I'm like, will you please be kinder to me? Will you please also be my needs? Um, you know, and, um, most often I've, I've gotten that person so comfortable with the way things have, have been going that they're not willing to meet me, um, or meet the needs that I'm asking for. Um, and then at that point, it's like, now I have to have, like, I have to be the authority of myself to be like, okay, now, like, are you going to continue because they're showing you who they are? They're showing you what it's going to be, or are you going to be the authority and cut it off? And so that is where it's like, I have to step into the power and like wield my sword. (laughs) Um, and so I've had (laughs) two, (laughs) had two opportunities to do that since Aries, uh, since the nodal shift. Um, and in both of those cases, I felt all of my power come back to myself and it's like, oh my God, (laughs) like this feels amazing. Right. I feel, I feel empowered. I feel like I have the autonomy over myself again. Um, and you don't really, well, I will say I can only speak for myself. I don't also, I don't often feel that until you get to that point. And then it's like, oh, okay. Now I have my power and I can feel that distinct difference. But, um, I think because I've gotten maybe with the South node, like I'm so comfortable with the power being with someone else um, that I don't really notice that it's a problem until it's a problem. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And then, or I would say until it's like a a massive problem (laughs) and it's like, I can't actually move forward anymore until this changes. Something has to change. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I think the internal for me is um, there is the part of me, again, I do have Mars and Aries um, and that part of me is very much still alive. And I think that part of me is like, no, like you don't need anyone else. You can decide for yourself. You can take action. You can follow your, you know, like you can do all of those things. And I think that's the part of me that's also just like so excited once I'm like, no longer distracted by trying to be in harmony with all these people. And I'm just pouring that into me. Yeah. So I have two questions. Um, One is, so how does anger factor into all of this? And how does anger play a part in this process? And how does authenticity relate to it? Yes. Oh, good questions. Good questions. Um, good answers. You're, you're giving me everything (laughs) I need to just bring it right back around to you. So wonderful. Um, so anger is an emotion that is not very comfortable for me. Um, it's an emotion that I have a hard time like sitting in. Um, and as I'm, as I'm like talking, I'm feeling like, you know, downloads come in where it's like, I think that this also goes back to childhood, like being in, like having Mars and Aries, I know how angry I can get, right? Like I know the extent of what anger can look like. And I have also been like negatively, um, like influenced when I am in those, you know, like people don't respond well to anger. Right. And I know that. (laughs) So my South node is like, we're not doing anger. Like we don't do anger. Mm -hmm. Um, but anger has been the emotion that has granted me freedom, right? Anger has been the emotion that has um, allowed me to take my power back. Anger has been the emotion that like, lets me know like alarm bells, like something is off here and you need to protect yourself. 
Um, because if not, I would just be like, oh, like life is good. Like everyone is, you know, going to be just like me and kind and whatever. And not to say I'm the most kind person in the world, but you know, um, you know, that people are going to treat me the way I treat them. And that's just not true. Um, so yeah, so I am actually, I think this transit is having me, um, build a relationship with anger. Like I've had to really allow myself to like journal or like I'll often do like voice notes where I'm like, I'm angry <laughs> at this person oh, for these so reasons <laughs> because I will just brush past it. Like something will happen and I'll be like, I'm so willing to take responsibility and I'm so growth oriented. And I recognize that like I create my reality. I brought these people into my life to teach me lessons and blah, blah, blah. So I will just rush past like they did a horrible thing to me or like they were not kind to me and I'll be like, yep, they did that. And then I'm like, okay, but what is my lesson? Like, what am I here to learn? Like, what is this teaching me? But it's like, I didn't allow myself to feel that anger so that I could learn the lesson so that this won't repeat. Like, I feel like if you don't feel it, then it's like, it wasn't that big of a deal. And so it's more likely that it's going to repeat. Um, and so that's something that I'm like actually recognizing right now, mm. like as I'm going through this cycle. Um, and then with integrity, I'm sorry, not integrity <laughs> with uh, authenticity. It's, yeah. How but with authenticity, I actually feel like I, in this year have recognized like how much I haven't been authentic um, in my life where like, you know, I, and, it, and I, I guess I'm more now than ever. Um, I'm also a Gemini rising. So it's like this like chameleon energy. Yeah. Um, and Aquarius, like friends with all of these different people. So there's all of this energy that's like able to merge and, you know, like be in all of these different spaces. And I think because I have all of these different influences, um, it's been hard to actually it's been a journey to actually know what's true for me, like to know who I am authentically without any external influence. Um, and so I think that again, like kind of such like anger has actually been <laughs> like where, you know, a boundary has been crossed or where, you know, like, Oh, I don't like that. Right. Like sometimes it's hard. Cause I like so many things I've had to focus on, like the things that I don't like in order to kind of, build the frame of like what is authentic for me um and so I've been leaning more into that and also just like spending more time alone and like maybe that also is an Aries thing right like um not necessarily with groups as much or like you know this year was the year that I like really transitioned out of like my out of a phase in my life that I was in for a long time, not that I was a huge partier, but like just those were, I had a lot of friends in, a, in that space. And, um, and I, I, I don't do that anymore. And so that was also something that I've noticed too, with this transit where it's like, it's a little bit lonely at times um, because it's requiring me to get so in tune with myself um, and like, what's true for me. Mm. I want to ask, and I'm going to try to not project my own answer into the question, but I'm probably not going to succeed. So I'll just warn you in advance. But do you find it to be more lonely when you're by yourself being authentic or more lonely when you're in the middle of a group of people who have no fucking clue who you are? The latter. <laughs> the latter. Um, and I think with that, it was like that then like led to like, oh, I would drink more or I would, you know, like I would kind of mask those feelings um, without knowing, but also that was normal in that space. And so it was like, okay, you know, like I'm just doing the normal thing, but um, I did a, well, this was actually a year ago. So I did a like dry September. And so I did 30 days where I was like, not going out, not doing the things. And I was just like, I don't want to do these things anymore. Like I'm over with these things. I'm over these things. Um, and that felt really good. And so that kind of like started this all. So it kind of started, I guess, last September, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like I have a lot of fun in my own, you know, uh, space and with myself and just diving into the things that are important to me. Um, 
And so it's not necessarily lonely in that sense. It's just different of like, you're, you know, like when you're getting into another cycle, it's like, well, I'm just used to these things being like fun. Mm -hmm. And so like, what is fun now? Like what does fun look like now? And um, redefining that definition for myself and also maybe defining it truthfully, like more authentically for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. Um, oh, I, do you have more to add to that? Um, no, no. no? Okay. Okay. I, my mind went blank and usually that means that like somebody else has something to say in this moment. Um, but it must mean come back in in a different spot. So Libra South node, what else do you have going on in Libra? So nothing. So Libra's in my fifth house, um, on my fifth house cusp. Um, in the fifth house, I do have my moon and Pluto, but they're in, uh, in Scorpio. So that's all I have in Libra. That's really interesting. Um, you have the, the South node in Libra, which is air, but the fifth house, which is typically associated with Leo, which would be fire. Mm -hmm. So like this mix of energies that is not normally like put together and then your 11th house North node then, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and your Aquarius sun, do you have anything else in Aquarius? Um, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. I have Mercury and Aquarius. Yes. Okay. Mercury. Yeah. So my sun and my moon are both at two degrees. And so they're square. Um, and I also have Mercury at nine degrees of Aquarius. <laughs> um, so sun and moon are square. Mm -hmm. And if your moon is in Scorpio and sun's in Aquarius, so that's like the closing square, mm -hmm. like the last phase of the moon before it like merges back into a new moon mm -hmm. and the 11th house north node like do you have a sense that like there's a gigantic community like in the ethers that's like already formed just like waiting for you to land in the middle of it I've been told that so much like I've I've been told that a lot um I do feel that way um, more now than ever because when I was first told that I was like what are you talking about like why well, what did it bring up when they first told you? Like, what were you, what were, what was the disbelief coming from? I was told it when I was like, I guess this was probably, I don't know, like maybe 10 years ago. Um, and I was first like getting interested in astrology, but not really like, you know, hadn't done much study and didn't really know like the direction. Um, I feel like I've lived a lot of lives at this point. Um, and so I was still very much in my like, corporate like I get a check and I do the things like Saturnian like cycles or whatever mm -hmm. um and so I was like well what would my community be about like what would people like I, I just didn't I couldn't figure out what like that would look like for me um and then now I think over the last you know 10 years or so where I've like delved deeper into my spirituality and um, healed a lot of my own like fears of like just even being a part of community because I have some wounding about being a part of community um, so I have to do some healing around that and um, even mm. being able to like really speak I have um, Chiron in Gemini and it's retrograde um, so even being able to like speak my truth in space it was just like so much discomfort around the idea of like what would that look like um but now like, I'm like, oh yeah, I could see it. And also like, I, I had a, I do readings for folks. I, um, and now I'm in a coaching, um, role, um, within community. And so I've had, like, I, I definitely have people gravitate towards me and like trust in like what I share. Mm -hmm. And so I, I could see it and I still haven't really tapped into it, but I'm like, oh, okay. I, I could feel the energy that's like kind of waiting. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Dude, I can feel it. <laughs> like, I, I mean, all things in divine timing. Yeah. Right? Because these people in the ethers that I can feel are just this like perfect, like puzzle piece fit with your radiant radical authenticity. Like mm -hmm. you just on fire with your own power and passion and they love the fuck out of it. Like 
actually, that brings me back around to something that really stuck out to me that you said, which was, um, gosh, dang it. It was something like, oh, people don't receive anger well. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that to be true? Um, I don't think that that's people like in general, someone's favorite emotion to receive from someone else. Like for someone to be angry with you doesn't necessarily feel good as someone to be like grateful or kind to you or um, excited towards, you you know, like whatever. So I, I do. That is a belief that I hold. Like people don't necessarily appreciate it, although I do agree that anger is like a really great tool for people to know how to engage with you. So I see the purpose in it, but I don't think that people um, respond very well to it. And that could be me because of like all of my shit, (laughs) all of my stuff. Well, that's why I ask because I have my own understanding of every time I start a sentence with people and then explain how people are, I'm explaining myself. Yes. That's my belief. That's like umbrellaing over this thing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I, and that makes sense because, and again, I think that like, our charts, like how things show up are like so influenced by our experiences. Um, And so I'm glad that you said that because it's, that's so true. Um, Another reason that I feel like I kind of lean back (laughs) away from anger is because um, my mom uh, is the Aries. Uh, My grandmother is Aries. They were the ones that raised me. Um, And there was a lot of anger (laughs) Um, in those relationships. Um, particularly with my mom, um, just like being a single mom, two kids, young, all of the things. Um, and so it was just like, I viewed her as angry. And so I was just like, I don't, I don't really like that. Um, and so that's a, that's a belief that I formed, I would say for sure. Yeah. Can I ask like in those experiences where she was angry, like, was she directing the anger at other people? Yeah. At me. <laughs> Oh, like, yeah. I don't think that's anger. That's violence. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you also, direct it at somebody, that's not anger anymore. Yeah, that's you true. Left the realm of anger. And now we're talking about being violent to another person and that's not fucking okay. Yeah. So, to separate the two, like, I think is really important because anger and being angry about something like it's part of your authenticity. It's part mm-hmm. of like, what pisses you off? What injustice will you fight for? Like, will you stand for? Like, where will your anger send you? And Mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing. But the second you start making a spear and start attacking somebody else, you've lost the plot of anger and now you're into violence. Yeah, that's a really great point. I think that's, yeah, I think that's like nice for all of us, myself included, is that there's healthy anger. Anger is such a beautiful thing, but you cannot, there's a bit what you can totally (laughs) There's a big difference, though, between are you throwing it at someone or are you letting it burn like a fuel inside of you? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, there's a huge difference in those two things. So I think when you say like people don't receive anger well, people don't receive being attacked well. So don't fucking attack them. And anger doesn't say that you have to do that. (laughs) Right. Those are two different things. You could choose to be angry and not attack. Like those don't have to be synonymous or linked and in the chain of progression, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a really great nugget. Like I think I enjoyed it. I enjoyed (laughs) it. (laughs) Thank you for bringing it out of me. Well, good. I love that. Yeah. So now, you know, like how do you practice owning your anger? You know, like, like you said, like anger is when a boundary got crossed. Mm -hmm. So it's like the anger like that energy that's now inside of us, like it's a creative force that is pushing us and like how you choose to channel that into like, let me put this anger into this brick wall so you can never see or talk to me ever again. You know, Mm -hmm. like I don't have to throw a spear at you. You just lose access to me. That's the Mm -hmm. consequence of your actions now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like that anger, how you choose to channel it. um, Again, that's part of your authenticity. Like that's a choice like any other, like it says a lot about who you are. And when you attack somebody, it says way more about you as the attacker than it does about the person you're, you're doing it to. Right. Right. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I feel like 
um, because I've, I've had this dance with anger where I'm like, Oh, fell it. Okay. How am I going to, um, how am I going to like navigate this? Um, so there, I think at times there was definitely some suppression. Um, but I do think it built up a muscle for me to kind of do what you said, where it's like, how am I channeling this into something else? Mm -hmm. Um, and so for example, in my work, um, I'm an equity and justice specialist, which means that um, I'm doing a lot of work around um, race and racism and um, the harms that are caused um, within our workspace and even with patients and community, et cetera. Um, And so there are certain harms that have been done historically. We don't have to get into all of them, but um, channeling that anger into being able to fuel literally what I do on a daily basis of like integrating new systems um, that will empower um, people of color, particularly. Um, But also um, I think that there is still a gift with my South node because I'm able to um, not necessarily like speak from my pain um, because I think sometimes when we're speaking from our pain, we can come with daggers. Like it can be like, you did this to me. And sometimes they did do this to you, you know? Um, but I think that I can, ch- I often try to channel the anger into power of like, okay, like I will process my emotions myself. And then I will then take what I need to take from this in a power position to um, like operationalize it in another space or to share that from a place of like, I can name these things without like getting emotionally charged. Um, and I can be heard and received. Um, and then action can be taken. Right. And then I'm prepared to take the action. And so I feel like anger has still been operating under the surface, although I'm like trying to like not necessarily have it like rear in a certain way. It's still been like underneath all of what I've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with Aries being like the warrior, the fighter, the like that archetype of taking action to like go to war if needed. It gives me like a, like a heart palpitation to even think about like picking up a spear and trying to fight another person. Um, because like there is so much diplomacy at work in that Libra South node where like if we can talk this out if we can come to a peaceful resolution we're going to Mm -hmm. and if at some point I you force me to pick up a spear and defend myself dude that's on you but like what I'm bringing to the table is peace and harmony even if you do stand more in your power on like the Aries North node Aries Mars end and I think, you know, one phrase that's really helped me and I have to do the same thing as far as like, well, this might've been before we started recording, but like slowing down to even know what's true for me versus just like my knee jerk reflex in the moment, um, having to learn, like you don't have to respond the same day. Like you don't have to give them an answer immediately just because they asked you for one. And so learning how to say, I'll think about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, give me a couple of days and I'll circle back with you once I have some clarity around that. Like practicing the muscle memory of that, like even when I'm just alone in my house, like, dude, like, like, I feel like that's maybe a piece of taking the authority inside of yourself. Yeah. You know, like I don't res- I don't tell you things because you asked me, even right. if you asked me. Like I tell you because I want to tell you. And that takes as long as it takes for me to find like what even is the the answer to your question you know like letting ourselves off the hook um I feel like that was really random compared to what you said but no I was just gonna add to that like that's challenging when you have Mars and Aries so like it has been very like this has been years of the making of me being able to just not respond Mm -hmm. like with anger right because I and I know that version of myself and I will say that I would I when after right like after you have the experiences or whatever it's like if I sit with myself and I'm like I don't like like 
the outcome when I just allow myself to like be reactive to everything mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. Mars and Aries can be very reactive. Totally. Um, and so that's when I'm like, oh yes, Libra South Node. You know, like I lean into my Libra South Node. Um, but again, it's like, it's that balance, right? Of like knowing when it's time to like have a conversation and knowing when it's time to like draw a line in the sand and, and say like, you know, it's a no, it's a no yeah. go or whatever. Yeah. Um, the other interesting thing that was coming up when you were sharing is that, um, and this may be because I have <clears throat> my Mars, I, I have all of this happening in my 11th house, which is the Aquarius house of, you know, community and things like that. Um, but I'm much more quick to be angry or to protect other people, <laughs> um, or community versus like, if something happens to me personally, I'm going to more likely land towards myself note. And I don't know if that's common for other, um, folks with this placement, but that's something that I've noticed as well. Like I can stand up and like, that's not okay for like the group, but me, it'll be like, huh, like I'll think about it. Like, is it worth being upset? Of it? Like it's the whole like back and forth. Like I have to do. Yeah. I resonate so much with that. Um, my Mars is in Pisces in the 12th house. And it's like, <laughs> unless I'm saving somebody else's life, like I'm forgiving to a fault and to my own detriment, it comes at a cost. Like you said, yeah. um, actually say more about that. You said in the very beginning of the conversation that like, you've been like a peacekeeper and harmonizer and all of that, but it comes at a cost to your individual authentic self. Like, yeah. Paint us a picture of like, what does that cost actually look like? What is, what does that mean? Um, I feel like I'm like, I feel myself node being like, Oh, that's not, that's mean to even share it. Like, you know, like to talk, no, like it's fine. Um, but that's the first reaction. That's the first reaction. To protect the other person. <laughs> yeah. To protect the people. Right. But, um, mm. no, like a, a great example of this would be, um, I've been my grandmother's caretaker for like most of my life. Like even some since I was like, um, like a kid, like five, six, seven, like my grandmother has had some health stuff or whatever. And so I would like be her nurse, you know, like at that age, um, but that was such an identity that I like took a hold of and like, I, you know, like I care for my family. I put my family first type of like identity. Um, and so that works to a certain degree, but like, um, I, um, you know, like my grandma had some stuff going on. And so like, we ended up, you know, refinancing. So like I own my grandmother's home with her and I live here and, um, is that like what I want for my life for the rest of my life? I don't know. Right. Well, actually I can say, I now know I do not want that. Um, but for a period of my time, it was like for a period, it was just like, okay, well, I'm just going to do this. And like, this is the right thing to do is probably like what came up. Like I should, you know, be present and I should help and I should, you know, do lots of shoulds. <clears throat> Um, and I remember being in therapy and I was like talking about like other things that I wanted to do, um, but feeling like indebted and I hate how that sounds, but it's like, I feel, I would feel so terrible to like leave someone who needs me, um, in order to do what's right, like do what is true for me. Right. Um, and I was just like, what do I do? You know, like with my therapist and she's like, I mean, it's your life to live at the end of the day. <laughs> so it's like, you choose how you want to live your life. And even in that, it's like, like, that's such a dilemma. It's such a like hard choice for me to make. Um, but <clears throat> I ended up having a conversation with like other family or whatever. And like choosing, like, I'm like, I'm going to be moving. Um, and still, you know, taking care of my financial obligations here in that way and still, you know, doing other things that's necessary, but like other people need to help because I can't actually sustain this. Um, and also just having a conversation with my grandmother too around like, you know, this isn't about like me not caring or, you know, like all of that, but mm -hmm. more of a like, I deserve to live the life that I want to live for myself. And that was like a really, really hard 
um, lesson for me and a really hard activation of like, you deserve to live your life, like regardless of who may not want, like may not agree with that. Cause everyone wants me to be happy. Like my family wants me to be happy, but when it comes to a co- comes at a cost for them and right. like how they're benefiting, it's like, you know, I understand how that would feel. Like, I, I think that that's a part of Libra too. It's like, I'm always in someone else's shoes and never in mine. <laughs> totally. So, yeah. It's like, oh my God, how are they going to take this? Da, da, da. And then when I actually have a conversation, 99% of the time, they're like, I totally get it. Like it's, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of an example. I would say that that came to mind for sure with that question. Yeah. Well, and I think too, like, um, what you're describing here, as far as most of the difficulty in doing it is inside of yourself. That like most of the time when you bring it out to the other person, like, I mean, how often, probably more often than not, it's like, what is best for you and your authenticity is actually what's best for everyone around you. And like, that's a hard that's a hard ball to roll down the hill. I think it's a hard, it's a hard like act of faith that to make that decision of like, am I really going to like not care for her? And just cause what? Cause like, I want to go live, like, is that really a good enough reason? Like, I mean, yes, because what if it's not just what's best for you? Mm -hmm. What if that is what's best for her? What if that is what's best for anybody else who's going to step up and like help to take care of her? What if their relationships get stronger as a result of that? Like, I think some of it, this is coming through. I hope it's, I hope it's not offensive, but it's like some, sometimes we need to be needed. Mm -hmm. And really that's the fear that like makes it so hard to like, am I really going to give up this identity of Mm -hmm. caretaker? Then what am I? Right. And you, I mean, you have such interesting energy, as you pointed out with like the Gemini rising, the Aquarius sun, like I'm guessing your identity has about 4 trillion facets and it sparkles like a diamond and it's absolutely beautiful. It could never be summed up in one word caretaker. Like that's any one word is going to fall so short and you deserve to get to discover like all of those facets, not just like the one main one that you know, was kind of like, dude, if you're taking that on at five years old, like, obviously that's what unfolded, right? So divine timing, I think, puts us in the perfect place at the perfect time for what we need. But to take it on at five years old, like, I mean, that's a baby brain. Mm -hmm. Like the first seven years of life, like that's a baby. Mm -hmm. That's a sponge baby. I mean, that's not a person to make a decision to like, say I want this like we don't even get to consent in this country till we're like 16 plus usually like I mean it's it's just not it's not fair to the inner child that's still in there and the child that you literally were I mean parentification kind of fits it wasn't exactly like you taking care of your siblings but you becoming a caretaker as a baby like Mm -hmm. that's not fair yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's interesting. I think again, like energetically, I'm always like, who needs, who needs help? Like my attention is always like, who is the person in need? Um, and I, and I gravitate towards that again, like doing the right thing. <laughs> it just felt right. You know, like it felt like the right thing to do mm-hmm. um, until it was like, okay, this is compromising, like what I want to do for myself. And again, it's like, it wasn't necessarily anger, but it was like, and I hate how that sounds at it, like burden, right? It's like, I'm, I have so much that I'm carrying that now I'm depressed with my own life because I don't see how I can get to where I'm going with this, like all of this that I'm carrying in my backpack, right? Like mm-hmm. all of this that I'm carrying on my shoulders. Um, So yeah, I think that that, that, has been like a a huge lesson for me and also like yeah I totally identified as like the caregiver like that gives me like I'm valuable you know because of that Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm able to you know like yeah 
And also like, that was like one of the best relationships that I've had in my life, like growing up, or it was just like, this is a person that gives me love. This is the, you know, so all of that coupled in, um, kind of made that, made it a beautiful lesson for me to learn. Um, totally. and then I'm still like un unlearning and peeling onions back, um, from for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause like, that's such an interesting relationship as far as like you said like the the main person who gives you love and to get their love you're giving Mm -hmm. like you're caring for them so like Mm -hmm. that's that's not I mean it is reciprocal right like you're caring and loving and she's loving and and I take it back it's like not reciprocal (laughs) it's like not not balanced and again like it it felt right and let me, okay, let me tell you a theory that I have about Mars conjunct the North Node. And before I do that, how close are they? Are you? Four, Four degrees. Four degrees. Okay. Mars is at 10. My, my Mars and North Node are like both on 17 degrees Pisces. And the past life like download that I got to understand that is that basically in a past life, I got really angry and I hit kind of like the president, like hitting the nuclear button. Like I, on impulse, I detonated something that caused massive harm. And I have such deep regret of that impulsive action that I Mm -hmm. took my impulse (laughs) and I hit it in like the least developed part of my chart so that I wouldn't even be able to get to my impulse until I had like all of this time to develop and heal and that like I basically took the fucking detonate button and I hit it as well as I possibly could and it has been such a journey of like my like I had no capacity for self-assertion like Mm -hmm. no 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 muscles for that whatsoever like I'm a go with the flow only person and and that's not a problem until it is a problem And then when you do, my life coach described it to me. She's like, it's like a, like, like Neptune, like rising up out of the sea. Like you didn't even know that this is like capable of this. And then by the time you're mad, you're, you're mad. And like, there's no turning back. There's no salvaging what it is that you're mad about now. And again, like, I think I did that. I believe our whole natal charts on purpose. So like, I believe this is on purpose. I believe I didn't want to make the same mistake I made last time where I got lost in the impulse and I didn't, I didn't think through the impact of my actions and you cannot take it back. Mm -hmm. And so kind of like what you were saying, like that self-suppression is like, obviously we came with it like this. So, I mean, I would rather be self-suppressed and then figure out how to let it out slowly and how to channel it in a healthy way. And yada, 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 than what I had last time, which was, no, I built in my impulse straight out of the box. I gave it to myself on day one, thought, yep, that's the, that's the ticket. That's how we'll get that job done. And I fucking blew up Atlantis or some shit. Like I, I did some damage and the guilt on my conscience lasted into this lifetime of like, no, I will, I will give grace and I will give forgiveness and I will give understanding and I will find my own sense of responsibility rather than throwing the dagger at the other person. Like I cannot stand violence. Mm -hmm. Like it just, that is one thing that fucking pisses me off Mm -hmm. to watch somebody take their anger and weaponize it onto another person. Like there is no worse act as far as racking up a karmic debt. And I think that's what I have is a karmic debt of like, I took my anger and I threw it, maybe not even at just one person. Mm-hmm. So this time I'm here to pay that back. And what that means is that, you know, I get attacked or provoked and I know how to be angry and not throw it at you right. and build it into boundaries instead and keep myself safe and put you on the outside. And now you're safe too from me because I'll fucking kill you. you come on. No, I, right. I wouldn't obviously not. I got you. I'm anyway. I got you. Yes. <laughs> I got you. Oh, but yeah, like those boundaries it's like it protects me from you and it protects you from me so Mm -hmm. you know yeah for For both of us 
Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if that resonates as far as like hiding the detonate button, but that's what I think Mars in North Node conjunct. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, I feel like for me, um, I had, I, I, I feel like I operated with more of my Mars and Aries, like when I was younger. Um, and again, like in my relationship with my mom, like getting in trouble a lot and like having to follow the rules, like rules were like very much ingrained into me, um, following the rules, um, you know, listening, like not speaking my, like think before you speak. Um, all of those things that like I was, you know, in trouble for daily growing up um, when I became of age or whatever, it was like, okay, well, I can't do what feels natural because I'm going to get in trouble. So I have to respond from, and they, I mean, that's what they say. Like you're, you're as a child, you're pushed more into your self node. So like I was pushed more mm-hmm. that way because I'm like, if I explode or if I allow this like Mars and Aries to do its thing, like it's not going to be good for anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I, I totally agree that that's, that's why like, you know, if people can't go as far as karmic astrology and past lives and all of that, like, it's like, just look at your childhood. That's all you need to see. And basically your parents or your caregivers, whoever they were, like taught you how to be your South Node. That's Mm -hmm. like your programming that you downloaded when you got here. But that programming matched your soul. That programming was like where you're coming from. Like you already love that shit. You love rules. You Mm -hmm. love like following the rules and the harmony that goes with it. Like you freaking love that. Right. And so you're like, yeah, sign me up. Oh, she loves rules. I love rules. Oh my gosh, we'll be best friends. And then you get there and you're like, this is stupid. This right. is so stupid. And like, that's where the beginning of our South Node evolution gets gets going. It's like, we get the treatment. Like my dad is a Virgo son. My grandma that I live next door to, she's a Virgo son. My Virgo South Node was just, I mean, the the importance of having every detail be perfect or you don't sleep yet. Like, I mean, that just being a hard worker and all of that, like, it's in my childhood, but I, I picked them. I was Mm -hmm. like, look at how hard they're working. Oh my gosh. I love these people. And then it's like, no, it's abuse. It's abuse. Don't, don't fall for it. It's a trick. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I'm a Pisces midheaven. And so like the home, the family, very Virgo energy as well. I see being with Virgo. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I feel like we have such different energies and yet at the same time, like it, it definitely resonates. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Mm. Do you have anything else that you would like to, you know, like the, the people who are in the ethers right now at the time we're recording this, the people who will eventually listen to this, like, especially if they're an Aries North node, um, is there anything else you would like to add? Yeah, let's think. Hmm. I feel like what um, this transit is is teaching, like the overall lesson um, that I'm getting thus far is really about like, we're here to live our life, right? Like we're here to do what's best for us. And that's an interesting phrase because I heard that so much growing up, like you got to do what's best for you. Or, you know, you hear that. And I don't Mm -hmm. think that, I think it's said with such sarcasm. (laughs) Like, I don't think that people truly mean that when they say that. And so I think that that was another reason why I didn't believe it. Or I'm like, can I really, should I really be doing what's best for me? Because it doesn't feel like what you're saying is true. And again, I'm a Scorpio moon, so I'm always taking in other people's energy and I can tell that that's not true. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. as that's mm-hmm. developing for me, I'm like, huh, you know, very confusing. But anyway, that's a tangent. Um, But I think that this is our time to really step into our power, right? To like allow ourselves to be the authority of our lives, to not people please, right? Like, how am I pleasing myself, right? Like, and then the people that agree or that it resonates with will naturally um, be attracted to me. Um, Because I feel like we do ourselves and others a disservice by 
just like being a part of the group or not speaking out when we know for a fact that we feel a different way or we want to go a different route. We want to do something different. Um, I think it is confusing <laughs> for other people. Um, and so it's not fair to them. Um, and we're like angry and resentful. And it's like we could have resolved all of that by just being true to ourselves. Um, and so I feel like this is a time that's really calling us. So like people might be, you might be losing people out of your life. Like, I feel like this is almost like a time of like isolation, um, a bit, um, for us to be able to like surrender the things that are, have been distractions from us being able to hear like what is true for us internally. Um, and it's giving us the opportunity to like really build that muscle, um, so that, once that is expressed externally, it is like a hundred percent our truth. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we get to build from there. Right. Like then we go into Pisces and it's like, okay, like wonderland. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I am so I'm welcoming this, um, next 18 months or I guess 17 months, whatever it is. Um, and I'm just like, wow, like it's come in and cleaned up shop already. So I'm just excited to see, how powerful I feel on the other side of it. Because I think, again, like going back to what I was sharing earlier, we can lose a bit of our power trying to like please others or not rock the boat or whatever. And so I feel like Aries is like, rock the boat. And if it flips over, that's okay. There's another one coming, you know? (laughs) Yeah, so I'll leave it there. Like that's kind of what's coming through for me. Mm. Well, thank you so much for your time and your stories and your authenticity and your vulnerability to share some real things with us. I personally found it like a lot came through as I was listening and I'm excited to listen again when I just get to take it all in. But yeah, I would love to hear down below anybody else's thoughts on the conversation, what it stirred, any aha moments. Um, Yeah. Is there, is there anywhere um, if people like, do you have work? out there somewhere like or social media or anything like that you want to leave with people yeah yeah. I'm on um Instagram um at ask Jasmine Joy um I'm building up my social media um account now but you can find me there yeah also TikTok same name ask Jasmine Joy with an s and an e okay I'll list those down in the description box perfect cool thank Thank you you Jasmine amazing oh (laughs)